We are a global society. And especially for the Gulen movement, because it leads in education, because it leads in interfaith dialogue, it's an important voice in this country particularly, so this country can fully understand and really embrace the Islamic culture. As a, I'm a state representative in Vermont, and every year the Cultural Center comes and they do a wonderful lunch for us, and they do a full spread in the Cedar Creek Room, along with various, oh, we had um, this the painting on the oil and water painting, and we had people dancing with music, and just introducing Turkish culture to the State House. And it was fascinating, and then I found out they offered a, a, a trip to Turkey. and. Several of us, I think it was almost a half, about a dozen of us all took them up and we got to go on the, on the trip. And it was simply spectacular. It was an introduction to a country I'd never seen. Everyone I've known has traveled to it because I think it's the biggest tourist destination that I know of. Everyone talks about going to Turkey. And that's how I got to go there. And it was just, and ever since then, I've kept a connect connection with the Cultural Center because I think they bring real value to the table for Vermont. And I just find the culture in Turkey just fascinating. I think the movement's focus on education, science and technology, and its focus on an interfaith dialogue, the good works that it does are spectacular, but I think for worldwide significance, it is the combination of an embracing education for boys and girls in modern technology and science and with a stress on interfaith dialogue. If ever we're going to see a light at the end of the tunnel in the, in the Middle East, I think this is what's going to lead it. I truly do believe that. What I saw in action in Turkey was so appealing to me. The focus on education and the focus on education for women that I do worry when I look at the more cons uh, repressive cultures in the Middle East, I worry about the role of women. And I, one of the attractions in wanting to go to Turkey was to see what role do women play. And they're a vital role. And the education of young women is brilliant. The fact that we went to, I do believe it was at that point, the best um, or the highest functioning science high school in the world was one of the places we went to. And what I was struck by was how much the faculty members were committed to the students. And, and I think that's how the movement comes about, that there is a real strong commitment to living a full cultural life and integrating into that higher education and modern education. The education of young women particularly in, in countries like Afghanistan, is both crucial and of vital importance to me. My heart goes out to them and how their, their, their roles change and swerve so violently depending upon who is ruling at that moment. It's, it's just terrible. I've read about other groups that have gone into Afghanistan, particularly I'm using it as an example, to do schools. And they have been very successful in many ways, schools for girls. I think, though, the Golan movement going in and doing a school for girls has a greater chance of being culturally accepted with real acceptance in the community. Because not only is it a school for girls that the community wants, but it is a school for girls within the Muslim tradition and within that culture. And that, I think, would makes a big difference to how it gets accepted and then it has real longevity within the community. That's the real change. 
And I truly believe that no parent of a girl truly wants their child to, to have that kind of de denigrated life. So I, I believe that, again, the movement's schools, particularly in these cultures, are very helpful. And also, they, they because there are so many other schools that are more repressive, that really aren't educating their training or brainwashing for all intents and purposes, it's wonderful that, but it's wonderful that parents have an, will have and do have an alternative to send their children to a school where they're getting an honest to God education, but that it, the education is within their religion. And I think that is an important thing because, again, going back to what I had said in the very beginning, I tr my biggest takeaway from my trip to Turkey was how the religion and the culture are one. I think I really, my understanding of, from my trip to Turkey has been that Islam is not just a religion, it is a culture. It is a full religion. It's it is practiced both in your behavior, the way you're living your life, and in your, in your worship. And the, the Gulen movement brings all of that together in a modern context. And I was very impressed with that. It reminded me a tremendous amount, actually, of the Mormons. And the, because you really, again, the structure and the focus on family is very, is very great. And so I, that's, I think I took that away more, and that's also what propelled me to be so supportive of the Turkish Cultural Association, because again, I want that I want this, this people to be comfortable a hundred percent of the time, not just in their mosque or where they're where they're worshiping. I want them to be com comfortable everywhere in downtown to see that they're, that Islam is part of this world. I think that the, the, for, to a skeptic with interfaith dialogue, I would have to say that lack of knowledge leads to conflict. Lack of understanding leads to conflict. Lack of understanding what the other person is saying to you and understanding the import of it, it leads to conflict and misunderstanding. The more you know of the other cultures, the better you understand and the better you're able to deal in a way that everyone is speaking to each other clearly. It's about transparency. You cannot be transparent if you're looking at a culture that you have no understanding of. I mean, I, you know, you look at every, every negative interaction in history. You have the culture and the barbarians. It's always, it's always phrased in those terms. When you're looking at the United Nations model, when you're looking at nations coming together to work on positive aspects like landmines and, and, and the World Health Organization, when you bring cultures together and bring dialogue, you bring transparency, you bring peace. And I think the best thing we could do is have more dialogue because you're not trying to win one religion over another religion. You're trying to have everyone talk to each other and find common ground. I don't, speaking from my perspective as a United States citizen looking out at the world, I see vast, we, we are looking at the Middle East blowing up. We are looking at a Shia-Sunni split, that are a, a civil war that's horrible. Um, we are looking at various interpretations of proper Muslim conduct, from dressing to being, for women to being fully covered, to be living a cosmopolitan, uncovered life. So there are many... It, misconceptions of what a Muslim is or what but Islam is. So it is vitally important that the community, the Islamic community come together and reach out to the non-Muslim society so we can get that dialogue. Again, we need to start talking cross cultures because we, we need to embrace the new world order. We are a global society. And especially for the Gulen movement, because it leads in education, because it leads in interfaith dialogue, it's an important voice in this country particularly, so this country can fully understand and really embrace the Islamic culture and not what they may or may not think is, is true culture based on their news reports. We went to the um, 
equivalent of what would be the Red, our Red Cross, and talked about all of the aid, both medical and educational and financial, that's going around the world to help struggling populations. And, it not, and it's an interfaith effort. And it really does bring the movement together with the rest of the world. It is just a very inspiring movement, and it's inspiring to see the young people in it. Charity is almost a selfish thing. I think it lifts you up when you give. I think it, it lifts you up as a culture, it lifts you up as an individual, lifts you up as a family. Any organization that works and does charitable work, I think it builds the organization, it builds the strength of the organization. To do good in a world that desperately needs help does nothing but strengthen the organization, the character of the individuals who are involved, and it also helps the people who may not be able to be directly involved, but they can contribute. So I think all the way down in, uh, on the line, it's important, both for personal and for group growth. And charitable, op charitable outreach is an opportunity, again, to further education and interfaith dialogue. It's very interesting. A few weeks back, the Burlington Free Press, our local paper, asked me that same question. Is, is why the Turkish Cultural Center in Burlington, Vermont? And I explained it partly because of our growing Muslim population and how important that was. But the other part was that we are, we, we do trade national, internationally out of Vermont. We have world relationships. This is another very important future trading partner with the state of Vermont. I am looking for greater and more cultural exchanges as we're going as we go forward. And also, we met with the Tur with the uh, I believe it was the uh, Turkish Businessmen's Association, and I kept saying we have many opportunities for investment in the state of Vermont. So come take a look at Vermont and see what we might be able to offer you. So I think both. Uh, economically, it's a good it's a good move for Vermont, and we are well, again we are part of the world. This is we are not an isolated state. We are, and also the cultural movement is almost. I don't believe it's in all fifty states yet, but it's pretty close, and that's also very good because when we went to we go to events if we're doing something with the cultural center, I may be meeting my counterparts in New Hampshire. And then we can be talking about other things that can bring our cultures together. As a politician, if I'm an elected, if I'm an elected political official, and there is a very strong movement that looks at interfaith dialogue, education, charitable works internationally, and it's well organized and as deeply inter ingrained in my community as the Golan movement is, is in Turkey, I would look at that as a political issue. Whether there's an agenda or not, it is a political issue to me because I'm a politician, so I'm going to be aware of that. The Golan movement, from my understanding, and their view of honesty, transparency, and accountability can become a real problem for a government that is not honest, transparent, or accountable. So I can see where a party that is in power would look at this movement and have some concerns. And I think in retro, even though the, the movement itself has no political gain personally, or it's not going for a political power or gain, it is definitely trying to impose in Turkish politics transparency, honesty, and accountability. And that is political, and that's great. I think for, for peace to really happen in our world, we don't just need the experts or the clerics or the, or the professors to be talking to each other. We need common people to be talking to each other. And one of the really amazing things that I see at work in the Hizmet movement is that it's doing just that. I'm very impressed with Mr. Gulen for several reasons. Uh, his emphasis on education his emphasis on science and the role of science and what Islam has to say about science and how we can apply that to our modern civilization in the 21st century. And also his very, very great 
emphasis on dialogue.